Hello, Tracy from Salem, uh, coming to you just to briefly talk about the April block for Roxy's Journal Creations. The prompts are uh, for the background, Old Quilt, and for the foreground, or for the focal point, Cozy Cottage. So, um, yeah, so here's, this is my journal of stitchery. Um, I haven't bound in the pages yet, but... Um, my samplers and um, this is the January block um, and I actually did no sorry is that right yeah this is the January block which was uh, rabbit um, and I actually did two of those blocks <clears throat> and this is the February block which was um, a neutral background and flowers for the focal point um, and this is my March block, which was, um, uh, I forget what the background prompt was, but butterfly was the focal point. And um, oh, I think it was vintage or, or repurposed fabrics was the, for the background. And um, I just, you know, butterflies, just not my particular thing. So I did a dragonfly instead. So that's what I got so far. The April block is um, quilt. The background is quilt. Um, let me put these in extra pages in here. Um, and the foreground is cottage. So I don't have any quilts. Um, I don't have any old quilts. I don't have any new quilts. And if I had any quilts, I would not cut them up for my journal of stitchery. Um, but so what I decided to do was to make a quilt and originally I was going to do a, um, I was going to do like mini hexes. Um, it's a very small page. Well, so I'm doing a double spread, uh, because I feel like I just need the room. Um, so this is a double spread, but even that is really small to make a quilt. Um, so uh, I was going to do like mini hexes, um, which I've never done before Eng English paper piecing. So I thought, okay, well, there's a challenge. I'll do that. Um, but you know, like, it's just not my, <laughs> it's just not my style. You know, I had like this little flowery um, uh, fabric and I was going to tea dye it and I was going to learn how to make hexes and do English paper piecing. And like, that is just not my style. And I was really fussing about it. And my, my mother, who, if you've listened to any of my videos, obviously my mother is like my creative consultant. <laughs> uh, she's an extremely creative person um, and a fantastic artist, um, also a fiber artist. She makes rugs. Um, she does everything. I mean, there's nothing that woman can't do. So, um, except maybe not knit. Although, no, that's not true. She's knit. She's knitted a couple sweaters for herself. But anyway, she was like... She's also like, you know, my like chillax Tracy person, right? Um, Cause I was, I had my knickers in a little bit of a twist over what to do for this. Um, so um, she was like, you know, please chillax. And what about um, some other kind of quilt? Um, and I can't remember if she said crazy quilt or I did. I think it was her. I mean, I feel like it was probably her. Um, and we, she and I had gone to a um, quilt exhibit at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston in, I think it was January. I mean, it was out of this world, this quilt exhibit. It was sensational. And one of my favorite... Um, one of my favorite quilts was a crazy quilt. Um, I have never made a crazy quilt in my life, but it seemed like the perfect way to use all the stitches that we've learned and been practicing and that I've been going to town with. And so I decided I will make a crazy quilt because sure, why not? I've never done this before in my life. Let me just... So it was like, 
YouTube palooza in my house for like two days while I watched this woman like 11 videos of making um, crazy quilts. And um, I learned how to, I mean, you know, learned. I got some basics on how you go about making a crazy quilt. So that's what I'm doing now. I am going to make nine little squares and then, um, yeah, this is, <laughs> I really should trim that off because I'm just gonna keep sewing it in to the thread. This is silly of me. How about if I turn it this way for one thing? Um, so yeah, so I, I am going to make um, a crazy quilt, which are, um, you know, we're sort of like the height of fashion in like the late 19th century or mid to late 19th century. I don't know exactly the dates. Um, and, um, you know, as was the style and Victorian, in, in the Victorian period, it was like a lot of black and then pinks and reds or um, a lot of velvet, all that kind of stuff. And again, not super my style. So I'm, you know, doing my own version as we all are in this lovely um, challenge, doing our own versions of, uh, you know, what, with whatever the prompts are. Um, so I'm using, you know, the colors I like and, uh, and trying to learn how to do this. So I thought I would make a square on camera, um, in case you also have never made a crazy, a crazy quilt. This is what I learned and I, I'm going to have to try to find those videos again and put links in the description section so that I give this woman full credit because she is clearly a master, a mistress of this fine art of crazy quilting. Um, so like, so, okay, so I'm, I'm already kind of messing it up because I did not get this all the way to the edge. I thought it was gonna go all the way to the edge and it didn't go all the way to the edge. And that's gonna be a problem later. How about if I cut off this? This is crazy. So this is obviously a sari ribbon um, and I really need needed for it to go all the way to the edge, and it didn't. So I'm gonna have to do something later to fix that situation. Um, but on we merrily stumble, right? So now what you do is you put your first piece down, you put the second piece down along one of the edges, you sew it and then you press it back. So you have to have your iron all the time, like right at the ready. And then you cut along this line, like, like that. Right, so, you, so you've made a straight line. And then obviously here also. Um, and if so the, these are really teeny tiny scraps, like this scrap I will keep. These are just a little too tiny for me to keep. Somebody somewhere knows what to do with those and, and keep on using them. Um, like put all the scraps on some fusible and iron it or and then cut it. I've, I've seen people do that. That is not me. So let's see, now I'm gonna put, so now I'm gonna find another, another edge. And she kind of just kept going clockwise but that part is, piece is not big enough for that side. As you notice, I already messed up here by not going all the way to the edge. So let's not do that again, right? Um, this is, but I don't really want two blues together. But, I, but, but two blues are gonna be together. Um, so what I did do is I tried to kind of, even though there's no particular pattern with a crazy quilt, I tried to kind of have like the corners use all the same colors and then uh, the sides all use the same color. So I, I'm kind of trying to have a pattern, which is why I'm attached to these particular colors right here right now. So let's see, I'm gonna do this, but I really want it to go a 
let's see. If I put this here, see, I'm going to have a problem right there. I can see there's going to be so. But this is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> this is going to go along here. So I flip that back and line it up along this line and sew it. And she just used a running stitch to sew her pieces down. Um, I'm using kind of a back stitch, kind of a running stitch, which is just like <laughs> um, not actually any kind of stitch. It's just me screwing around. Um, but that's what we're going with. Oh, and she has you press. Every time you put a piece down, she has you press. Um, I kind of want to be careful with the pieces that are velvet. You know, different, that you, you can't just randomly press every piece. Like, you know, if you're using, like there's certain materials that are probably just gonna melt or change color if you put too much heat on them. So you ha you do have to be careful. Um, particularly somebody like me who doesn't actually know <laughs> what fabrics will do what. Um, that's just not information that lives in my head. So, uh, but she talked about that. She, this mysterious woman whose name I do not remember. Let's see, she called herself <sighs> Dances with God, what was it? It was a humorous twist on Dances with Wolves. Oh, Dances with Pitbulls. That is her channel, I, I believe. That is the name of her channel, Dances with Pitbulls. Um, and she is she clearly makes a ton of these, knows how to do it in her sleep, and um, is good at both the creating of the patches and then the, the stitching that she does on top of them. If you have never seen a crazy quilt, uh, just just Google that. It's a very, very particular thing um, in which you create these squares and then you put all these stitches on top. Um, right? It was a very Victorian thing to cover every square inch of everything, <laughs> right? No bare space, no clean lines. That is not the Victorian aesthetic, um, right? So Crazy Quilts definitely had stitching at the yin-yang and embellishment at the yin-yang. So if you enjoy that, you should check out Crazy Quilts. Okay, <clears throat> then you fold it back, right? So when you're, when you're going towards the sides where you're gonna wanna cover it, you wanna pick a pick a large piece. So I, I don't wanna put the heat right on the front of this velvet, so I'm actually just gonna lay it down and press it from the back. Because I don't wanna completely crush that velvet. I mean, it's a little bit already, but. Um, okay, so then what I need to do is cut this end in this line. And this is not exactly straight. So maybe I'm gonna straighten that up a little bit as well. But this is obviously not a perfect science, which is great for somebody like me, who's a total noob, who doesn't have massive sewing skills. Is this gonna work? That is gonna work. Um, You can be, uh, and also like the, the, yeah, the being precise thing is not my exact happy place, being fussy. Um, it's funny because I'm completely like that at work. <laughs> I am the administrator in my um, place of work. And so I organize the heck out of everybody and everything. And so when I come home and I do my stitching, I really don't want to um, have everything be insanely fussy. Um, 
I just want to play and create and muck about. So, <clears throat> yeah, so that, that means any number of things for my sewing. <laughs> but um, it's something I'm enjoying about this um, crazy quilting is that I really don't have to be, it's not like um, regular quilting where you have to be really incredibly precise if you're doing a pattern and you have to measure the heck out of everything. Another project I'm working on, I'm trying to do a flying geese something or other. Um, oh, uh, you know, again, something I've never done before. And um, the math of it and the precision of it is just making me so cranky. Okay, so again, I'm gonna press from the back. All right, so we're getting there. We're getting there. So I need to cut this so that it's straight, so that it's flush. It's maybe the word I want. Mm -hmm. So you see how this is happening? I just keep, I keep, you know, turning and going to different places and I make sure the line is straight, and then when I have that line straight, then I, that's where I'm gonna put my next piece. Oh, and look, it's gonna happen again. That stinking little corner is going to be sticking out because, I mean, so I could just cut another piece right now. That's what I should do. I should cut a larger piece because I don't want that little corner sticking out. Let me, let me look at my scraps. Maybe I already have one that's, oh, oh, there. Look at that scrap. That'll save my patootie. All right. Ta-da. Um, all right. So this is our last piece here for this particular block. I mean, you could pin. I should be pinning. You <laughs> should. There's a word I really hate. However, I do like things to come out the way I want them to come out. So there are times when you should just get out the dang pins and get over your bad self and pin something so that it comes out the way you want it to. Obviously that's not happening right now. <clears throat> so I'm also I've also been thinking about the cottage this is not this okay so this is not tacked down yet and I can see it's it's all gonna move around and muck up and I'm so close now to actually getting it like pretty decent let me not muck it up just pin it up Blanchard um so I'm thinking about the cottage. Um, and how I'm gonna do that. Um, and I don't, I just, I don't want it to be too, yeah. I'm just, I'm trying to think of how, how to do that on a, on a crazy quilt. Keep it on the camera or people won't watch your YouTube. Um, so I've got some sketches going and I've got some sketches for some plant life. Um, I want there, I want it to have a super playful feel because a crazy quilt is very playful. So I want to kind of keep with that playful theme without getting like too cutesy or overdone, um, which is something I mentioned the Victorians had a high propensity to do. Um, 
but I do not want to have it be overdone. Uh, but I want it to, I want the um, background and the focal point to speak to each other, right? And, and kind of have that same playfulness. Okay, so um, the square is done, except that I'll obviously have to fix that somehow. I could just do, I, I mean, essentially, I'm probably just gonna do a bunch of stitching here, right? And to cover this up. Uh, so then you flip it over and square it off, cut off the excess is what I mean. All right, so I need to tack this down. I should have done that before I cut it, right? Oh, so many things to learn, so many mistakes to make and things to learn from those mistakes. Tack that down before you cut it so that you don't, you know, so that you don't do that. <laughs> Oy. Well, it's on the edge and all the edges will have stitches because that's classic crazy quilt. But, t but learn from me. Tack it down before you cut it so that you don't do that. Learn from my mistakes. I believe I said on some other video that like maybe I should just name the channel. Learn from my mistakes. Um, because I make so very many of them. But... Lest you think I'm beating myself up, I am not. I am learning. I am learning. I'm having way too much fun with this project to beat myself up. I mean, all right, well, I have to tack that down more than I have, clearly. But for the sake of finishing up this video and letting you get on with your day, let me just turn this up. And there we go. One little tiny square, done. So I have nine of these to do, and then I will join them, or I'll, I'll probably sew them onto the background, and then I'll put the stitches between them so that it will look all of one piece, is how it will work, I think. All right, I hope you're having a great time with the April block, um, and thanks for stopping by.